Welcome to the High Blow HP Series Repair Kit video. Since 1971, when High Blow invented the linear diaphragm pump, the High Blow name has stood for high quality and longevity. But after 24-7, 365 day use for a few years, even four or five, the diaphragms will eventually rupture. When that happens, a safety switch mechanism will cut power to the pump. The great thing about a high blow is it can be repaired within 20 minutes with only a few tools. This is what sets us apart from different pump technologies that require a professional to come in and rebuild the pump. High blow pumps can be rebuilt two times before it is recommended to buy a new pump. After 10, 12, 14 years, after the second repair, the pump starts to run a little hotter and the diaphragms will rupture if you were to repair it a third time. The contents in the repair kit include the filter, a set of diaphragms, and a set of casing blocks. The only moving parts inside of a high blow pump are the diaphragms and then the umbrella valves that are located in the casing block. It's definitely important to replace the casing block when you replace the diaphragms because those valves will wear over time and it will impact the performance of your pump. Tools needed to repair the pump. Number two, Phillips screwdriver, two nut drivers, a seven millimeter and an eight millimeter, and potentially a rubber mallet. Now we recommend using hand tools for this repair because power tools have a tendency to over torque the screw or the nut and it could cause some severe damage to the inside of our pumps. First step in the process is to make sure that your pump is unplugged. After that, we are gonna replace the filter. To do that, we're gonna unscrew the filter cover, remove the filter cover, set the old filter aside. If you have any dust, pollen, dirt inside of the filter cover area, at this point, you wanna take a damp cloth, make sure that's removed, or even an air compressor to blow it out. I'm gonna put the new filter in, put the filter cover back on and screw it in. We do recommend removing the filter cover and checking out the filter every six months or so. You may need to clean it uh, with air, compressed air or uh, run it underneath your sink if you, if you do run it through water, make sure that uh, you dry it before uh, you put it back into the pump. All right, next step is to remove the upper housing from the lower housing. We're gonna take our eight millimeter nut driver to do that. Remove all four screws on each corner. All right, once the screws are removed, we are going to remove the upper housing. We're just gonna pull up on the housing and keep your hand on the outlet port. A lot of times it'll just pop right off, but if you have trouble, you can use the, the mallet and you know just pull up on the upper housing and then slightly tap the lower, this uh, outlet port, and that will remove the housing. We're gonna move that to the side. Next, we're gonna take off the sound absorber. At this point, we are going to take a look at the top of the pump to see what type of safety switch mechanism the pump has. There are two different types with the HP series. There is the micro slide switch type, and then there is the screw type. If you have the screw type, there's another video on our website that I'd recommend that you check out. It shows specifically how to repair that type of pump and replace the screw. The micro switch is what I have here. Essentially, the switch will be off center if the diaphragms have ruptured. And um, eventually, we're gonna move that back to center. We're gonna leave it as is for now. Next step is to remove the L tube. And we'll do that on both sides. I wanna pay attention to this bottom gasket as well. Um, it can become brittle with uh, a lot of use, or if you're in the south uh, or in a dry climate, it can be brittle and start falling off, tearing. 
And if it gets bad enough, some air can start seeping through that, that crack and it could cause some performance issues for you. Once the L-tubes are off, we are gonna remove the casing block. There's four screws here. All right, once the casing block has been removed, we are gonna take our seven millimeter nut driver and loosen the nut and remove the nut and the washer from the diaphragm. Then we're gonna gently pull off the old diaphragm and set that aside. We're gonna to move to the other side of the pump We've already taken the L-hose off. We're gonna remove the casing block, each of the four screws. All right, once the chamber or the casing block has been removed, the diaphragm is attached to the rod and we're gonna gently pull the diaphragm and the rod out of the pump. Uh, the best way to do this is to push down on the rod on the other side, you hear a click and then you kind of finagle it out. At that point, we're gonna remove the diaphragm and then replace it with a new one. I'm gonna grab our new diaphragm, put it back on here, the washer and the retaining nut. Use our driver to tighten it a little. Not gonna go completely snug as of yet. We're gonna insert this back through the pump first, lining up the holes, making sure to push down on that rod so you can get the diaphragm in place. Next step is to tighten that nut on the diaphragm. After that, you're gonna take your new casing block and attach that to the diaphragm. Make sure the port is pointed towards the L-tube. Make sure that the screw is snug, but we don't need to over torque it. If you do that, you can crack the plastic. We're gonna, next step is to attach the diaphragm on the other side of the pump. I'm gonna line up the holes here. Make sure the rod goes through the center of the diaphragm. Get your washer and your retaining nut. We're gonna tighten that. Again, make sure it's snug, but don't overdo it. If you over torque it, it can cause some pretty significant damage to the inside of the pump. And we're gonna Assemble the new casing block, line up the holes. And then insert the four screws and secure those. All right, once the chamber blocks are secure, we're gonna reattach the L-tubes on both sides. Move the clamps to the top. Make sure they're snug. Uh, at that point, we are going to uh, recenter the switch uh, to engage the motor. Uh, essentially, there's uh, some uh, arrow there and a small little orange button. If you click over that button, 
it'll kind of hear a clicking noise and it'll come into place in the center of the assembly. Next step is to reattach the sound absorber. Uh, this helps keep the mechanical noise uh, lessened, uh, dampened inside the pump. And the final step is to attach the upper housing using our eight millimeter nut driver. Again, don't need to over torque this. Just uh, tighten it till it's snug. And that's it. You've replaced a high blow air pump with some uh, uh, with a repair kit. Again, you can do this two times before getting a new pump. Should be as good as new and run for more years to come. Thank you for using high blow air pumps for your system. We really appreciate your business. If you have any further questions or need any assistance, any technical help, uh, please give us a call or shoot us an email. Any of us will be happy to help you out.